Hey guys, welcome to Cleaves Tech. Today we're going to show you how to install Liquid Freezer 2 on an LGA1700 motherboard. On your screen, you're going to see what we have in our uh, Liquid Freezer 2 kit. This is an older revision, obviously. And um, on the bottom right corner, you see the LGA1700 mounting kit we are going to be using. In the top left corner in the blue is the radiator mounting stuff that we are not going to be going over. Um, there's plenty of information on how to mount a radiator elsewhere on YouTube, but Today we're just going to be showing you how to mount the pump block to your motherboard basically. So we're going to be using everything you see in the bottom right and we're going to be tossing everything you see in the bottom left. We're just going to put that off to the side. We're not going to be using any of that. If you buy a Liquid Freezer 2 package that includes the LGA1700 mounting kit, this is what you'll be looking at. Pretty much the only things we're not going to be using are the standoffs you see x out on the bottom. The standoffs we are going to use are 13 millimeters long in the middle section. These are the parts we're going to be using. You can use this as a reference to see what we're pulling out. Please note that the metal, there are metal washers and rubber O-rings and we are not going to use the metal washers at all in this install video. <laughs> now we're going to take our two mounting clips and the two screws that are used to screw them into the pump block. And we're gonna grab those. So now we're just gonna screw our mounting clips onto our pump block. Pretty self-explanatory. There's only one hole, there's only one screw. Don't forget to remove this plastic film over your cold plate. On some Z690 motherboards, you're gonna find that the pump housing is a little too big. You can actually remove a piece of the housing right here with these two little screws on the bottom of the pump block. It's, uh, it's not gonna be necessary for other motherboard, but if you do find that you have issues with it fitting, you can, uh, like I said, just remove these and sometimes it'll help it fit. I can tell you for a fact it will not work on a Z590 Strix uh, ITX board. Now we're going to get ready to prepare our backplate. So we're going to grab our backplate as well as the four nuts and the four rubber O-rings that go with it. So now we're going to take the four nuts and we're going to put them through the back of the back plate. As you see here, we're just going to put them in the corner. You want it slid all the way to the corner of the groove. And we're going to take our rubber O-rings and we're just going to put all four of those in each of the, uh, the nuts in each of the corners. Now we can take our back plate and we're going to put it off to the side. We're going to get our motherboard ready to attach the back plate to it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over and we're going to grab our spacers. These are four little black rings attached to a piece of paper. Um, we should have eight total. We're going to put four on the front here. We're just going to line them up around the socket. There's four holes where your uh, standoffs are going to go. We're just going to put one of these spacers around each of those holes. And once you've got them placed on the front, we're going to flip the motherboard over and we're going to do the exact same thing on the back side. We're going to take the, uh, the last four spaces that we have and we're just going to put one of those around each of the, uh, the holes where we're going to have your back plate going through. Now we're going to take our back plate, we're just going to place it down as shown. We're going to take our motherboard and place it so each of the nuts goes through the holes around your socket. Now 
Now we're going to grab our four LGA 1700 standoffs and we're just going to screw one of them into each of the holes. Um, you want to slowly get each one started. You don't want to just screw one in all the way and then screw the next one in all the way. You want to kind of slowly evenly screw them all in. Now that we've got all those tightened in, you just want to check the back plate and make sure that you've got even pressure applied on all four corners. You don't want one corner sticking out awkwardly, you know, different than the, the other three, I guess. Now we're going to take our thermal paste and we're just going to apply that from corner to corner on our processor. Now we're going to grab our four thumb nuts and we're going to prepare our pump to be attached to the motherboard. Now we're just going to place our pump block over our CPU. We're going to make sure each of the standoffs goes through one of the corresponding slots in the corner. And we're going to take our thumb nuts and we're just going to start threading them in. You don't want to thread one in all the way. You want to, same as the standoffs, you're just going to slowly apply, apply pressure all around. So what we have left in our picture is going to be used to mount your radiator to your case. Obviously you may have more hardware depending on the size of your radiator. And the last thing we're going to do is take this four pin PWM connector. We're going to plug that into our pump fan optional or pump fan one or CPU optional. Any of those uh, four pin headers uh, next to your socket it should be fine. And uh, well, thanks for tuning in, guys. We appreciate the support. If you want us to continue putting out content like this, please consider subscribing and uh, we'll see you guys next time.